Welcome back to my workshop for the start of what is yet another exciting project. What we have before us is an old traditional fruit and veg cart. It probably dates, I don't know, late 1940s I guess. And I think it's fair to say it's had a bit of a hard life. It's got a, a strange collection of wheels on it, including some like this. I, I've never seen this kind of pattern before. It's a very bizarre looking wheel, but whatever. Anyway, it's come into the workshop and it's come to be transformed. I've got several weeks to do it, which sounds a lot, but it actually is an awful lot of work to do, so it's gonna go very quickly. And when I finish, this goes back to one of London's trendy markets and it becomes a mobile oyster bar. How trendy is that? I think that's so hipster, I'll have to grow a beard just to work on it. But there's lots to do. Need to complete new set of wheels. The counter bit needs to be replaced. This bit's going. Needs a complete new canopy. Fold down counters around the side. Paint job, some electrics. So not too much really, just keep me busy for a week or two. The first job is to make some new wheels. And if you've seen my channel before, there's plenty of videos on there on how to make wooden wheels. So I'll scoot through that bit quite quickly and then we'll move on to the more interesting stuff not the making wheels isn't interesting because I do it for a living so I like it we'll go through some of the more traditional bits about making a, a traditional cart like this so without any further ado a new set of wheels awaits so as you can see we've ended up with a pretty weird collection of wheels this one is the original pattern wheel or what I would expect to find on a carriage or a cart of this sort. That's but these ones. These are these are very strange. But I mean, it doesn't matter because everything is falling apart. I mean, this one's held together with little bits of steel and cable ties for some strange reason. So there's no way you can actually trundle this down the road ever again. We'll take this wheel here to be the pattern, and we'll make all the wheels to this specification and we'll just put these ones down as an interesting piece of history. So the fun part of the process about making wheels is putting the tyre on. What you can see there on the fire is I've got two tyres. I try and do two at a time. One big, one small, and then that way I can't get them mixed up. I'm going to heat the rims up in a fire. That causes them to expand. And then I can quickly put them over the top of the wooden wheel whilst it's still hot. And then pour water on it, and then that will shrink it on, and that will hold it all in place and you'll struggle to get that off again, which is just what we want. In the olden days, each market would be served by a sort of a fa local family firm who would hire out all the market carts. The market traders didn't actually own the carts, they would hire them for the day. And so that the firm could work out whose cart was which, they used to have the name of the firm and the name of the market that they served carved onto the wheels in various places throughout the body of the cart. So in this particular instance, this cart is going to be used at Portobello Road, which is one of London's famous markets. 
and it's going to be owned by a guy called Pete Dodwell. So here's his name. So I should be carving that into the wheel and the name of the market as well. So there you are, there's Portobello Road. That's come out rather well. If you look at my Instagram feed, you'll notice that over lockdown, I spent a lot of time studying lettering. And uh, I think it shows. I'm pleased with that. Well, this is the last chance to see it as it stands like this. You'll never see it like this again. It's time to take the whole thing apart. I won't bother filming this bit because we'll just work on the theory. There's lots of banging, lots of noise, and eventually we'll end up with a chassis. So come back in a minute when we get to the chassis. I'm delighted to say this bit is fairly solid. Everything else was as rotten as it comes, but the actual chassis has survived quite nicely. And you can see its original colour is this light blue. I rather like this. But what I'm going to do is to strip it down a little bit further take the turntable mechanism off, clean it all up and then what I'm going to try and do is get a coat of paint on this or well, sand it down and get a coat of paint on it now because while it's like this it's accessible, it's easy to get to uh, it's easy to get some paint on it so now the process of putting it all back together starts and in stripping it all down what I've discovered is that the chassis is bowed obviously this is lots of years old it's been used as a fruit and vegetable for years and it had a big overhang on the back an enormous overhang on the back and all the weight was on the ends there was nothing in the middle um, so all the weight was constant and so therefore over the years it's bowed and it's impossible to straighten this out um, and if I replace these bits then frankly I might as well start with a new cart because it would be faster so the way that I'm going to deal with it is these cross pieces here are all different thicknesses. Normally they'd all be about sort of 30 mil, um, but they vary from 40 mil to 15 mil here in the middle, which will then counteract, um, will counteract the bow going that way by putting them. We're then putting 25 mil planks on the top, which is considerably stronger than what was there before. And allow us to get away with doing this and we'll still still be able to get an overhang once i've got these fixed down i then have a series of these going that way this is all douglas fir um, when it's varnished it's, it's got a lovely bit of figure going through it lovely grain so once that's varnished that's going to look absolutely superb well, what a difference a coat of paint makes. I've, uh, I've put the undercoat on this edging. And all of a sudden it lifts the whole thing up. I mean, this has had a couple of coats of varnish. It's still going to have another rub down and another coat of varnish. But it's starting to look really quite nice. And if I wanted to have a flat market cart, then this is about as far as I need to go. But this one needs to have a cover, it needs to have a superstructure, and that's what we're going to move to next. So now I'm at the point where I have to consider the roof. Now this is the old roof that was uh, cut off so they could transport it here to the workshop. And as you can see, it's pretty rudimentary, there's nothing sophisticated about this. Now ideally, you'd make this out of something considerably stronger. But what I have to take into account is the weight factor. This has to be a mobile structure, but it also has to be a strong structure. Because it will be being pulled down the road. Um, and I can't always guarantee that it's going to be pulled at walking pace. So, I need to build some strength into it. So my solution, and this is one of the uh, top pieces 
for the roof is so instead of cutting halving joints I'm cutting mortises this is a much stronger joint not only do I get a lot of glue into it I get there's a lot of wood surface but there's a lot more wood surface so there's a lot more glue involved um, and it holds it together so it will be much stronger but I still keep the weight in them the downside is it means I've got 42 mortises to cut by hand well we've reached a point I can put off no longer I've been vacillating as much as I can but uh, eventually you have to bite the bullet and this is to build the superstructure now I've already cut everything to size and what I've done is I've cut mortises in each corner of the top deck and there's also one supporting this little bit here and this is going to support all the superstructure which will make it nice and strong well I'm delighted to say that it all went up very fairly well uh, it just needs a bit of time now for the glue to dry I shall make a few sort of steel right angle brackets just to sort of fit in areas like here and down there just to give it some strength for when it's being towed down the road I'm quite pleased the way that went together we now have well, this is slightly higher than it's going to be when it's on the ground, when it's got its proper wheels on. Um, but that's not a bad height for a bar, is it? I could, uh, I could stand there and pass the time of day. Well, as you can see, I now have the roof structure in place. And what we've got is a 50 by 50 millimetre frame. And then there's some battens, 25 by 50 going that way. And it's all mortised together. This is much stronger than the old method. Then on the front of this, we then have a flap that comes down one meter. And this becomes a roof, which then extends out this way and then just lifts up out the way. I'd like to pretend there's some fancy sophisticated method of doing it, but you'll be amazed when you see what it is. And there'll be another one on the back as well. And so we'll end up with a sort of a three meter wide roof. Then on this bit, here, this is going to be our counter. We then have a counter around three sides, which flaps up, and people will be able to eat their oysters because this is going to be an oyster bar. So they're going to eat their oysters, which will be served from somebody on that side. So I next need to get the the roof extensions in place. And we'll go from there now as luck would have it I've just finished constructing one of these and it's on the bench at the moment so as you can see what we have here is another frame exactly the same as the main roof section just ever so slightly narrower uh, but it's one meter wide by the length of the cart long 50 by 50 around the outside for some strength 25 by 50 across here I'm trying to watch the weight the weight becomes a real issue um, and you're sort of compromising strength for weight. So this is a fairly typical example of the kind of things you can't buy anymore. This is the stay that holds the uh, roof extension up. So we've got a hook on one end, we've got an eye on the other and then that's put into a screw eye. So that will go up in the roof and that will be the stay that holds the whole thing together. So I've got to make three of these. I've got one that's alright and now I need to make three more.
Well, here you are. We've scooted ahead and didn't bother making a video. But it wasn't very exciting, really. What I have done is I've installed the electrics. What we have is three rather elegant brass bulkhead fittings. Very nautical, but then, let's face it, this is an oyster bar. So it's at the front we have our counter, which in a moment we'll fix to. But we've now got these LED tapes built up into the ceiling. It illuminates the top of this absolutely beautifully. But it also means if the customer wants to put a sign up there, uh, the sign is perfectly illuminated as well. Now this is one of those jobs I always try and do at the end of the day. So that way they have overnight to dry and then when I come back in in the morning uh, they're in a good position. So this is the second coat of top coat. I'm using a special coach enamel gloss. It's a super high gloss paint. The colour has been chosen by the client, but as luck would have it, I've used this colour before, I quite like it. It comes out really nicely. To get to this point, these walls have already had two coats of primer, uh, a coat of undercoat, which is quite a thick coat, and then this is the second coat of gloss. Once I've finished this, they'll then have all the pinstriping and so forth that you would normally expect. If it was a carriage wheel, you would then go on from that uh, to do a couple of coats of super clear varnish. But as this is a market cart wheel, I'm not going to do that. Not that the market cart wheels don't deserve to be varnished, but because you have to really look after the varnish and these are real working wheels they're going to have a hard life and the chances of anybody maintaining the wheels every year are quite remote which is what you really need to do if you're going to be putting varnish on you need to sort of rub down the varnish and recoat it every year certainly every second year and that's never going to happen on a set of market cart wheels if you want to keep up with the things that I make, you can always have a look at my Instagram account. In fact, I've got a couple of Instagram accounts. Um, the details of which you'll find are on the bottom of the screen now. Now you can see what a difference a couple of coats of paint make. And now I get to do the lining bit. Now this is something I started doing through the first lockdown. And I must admit, I thoroughly get to enjoy it. Um, Well here we go, one market cut, complete with lighting, complete with a cover. Complete with a bar. It's actually complete with three bars. Have you ever seen anything like it? Hopefully this won't be the only one. Somebody else will get me to do one as well. I rather enjoyed doing this one. Hopefully this will go on to do many years service. I think it's come out rather well. It's rather smart. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, go and have a look at some of my other videos. You never know, you might enjoy those as well. In the meantime, 
thanks for watching bye bye